Hey guys, uh, welcome back to Daily Read on YouTube. Uh, once again, the working website will be www.realhistoryww.com and the WW is short for Worldwide, where the world's first human beings and all their civilizations were diverse blacks. Now, a lot of you might have a problem with that, but I want you to imagine this. Imagine that human beings have been on planet Earth for only 100 years. We've only been here for 100 years. And I want you to imagine that 99 of those years, there were no variations of pure red hair because brunettes are hybrid redheads. Uh, there were no variations of pure blondes. Uh, for example, today you have the hybrid versions of blonde hair we call uh, ashy blonde. Uh, there were no variations of blue eyes, green eyes, hazel eyes, gray eyes. There were no uh, skin type or genetic mutation or associated with genetic mutation, for example, uh, pink, red, white, creamy white skin like milk and pale white. And there were no admix colors like, you know, myself, dark brown, you have light brown, high yellow, low yellow, or as they, we affectionately say, red bone. Okay. So for 99 of these years, if you, if you would have went to any part of the earth, you went to Europe, Asia, Americas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And we know that the sea levels were thousands of feet lower. Uh, you have caves being found underwater 400 feet with human bones, okay? So for 99 years, the entire planet, there were no redheads, no blondes, no non-brown eyes, no non-black skin. That only leaves but one option. Every human being on Earth had dark brown eyes first, but something happened that caused brown-eyed peoples to give birth to non-brown-eyed peoples. Every human being on Earth had woolly hair first. Woolly hair uh, gave birth to straight hair. <clears throat> straight hair mixes with woolly hair produces the subdominant. That is the hair type that submissive to the dominant woolly hair and dominant to the recessive straight hair. We call that curly hair. Every human being had black hair and black hair pe people through some code changes on the Y chromosome and the mitochondrial DNA gave birth to the pure red hair. I'm talking about the pure red hair. Where it's so red, it just only your mom could love that thing. Okay? <laughs> um, and the blonde, likewise. And only one year ago, that black skin peoples of every genetic variation, straight hair, uh, sharp nose or pronounced nose, thin lips, gave birth to a lot of variation of themselves. And if you read in the scriptures, uh, you know, God separated the nations by the colors of their skin. Because he told uh, Jacob that, you know, the, the, the wife of Jacob, there are two nations in your womb. And one was born red, Esau. Jacob, they didn't mention his pigmentation. But if you check his lineage down to King Solomon, King Solomon says, I am black. Okay? So the non-black world in their pure state, because now they're all hybrid peoples. In China, Japan. And Korea, you're going to see that Korea was also black first. And so this video is going to be titled The Last Blacks of Korea. All right. So the, the world from the beginning was black skin, brown eyes, woolly black hair, and genetic manipulations through mutations over time produced variation. So when I say the world's first human beings were diverse black, that's simply, that's exactly what I mean. Okay. So if you don't understand the concept, I would urge you to learn basic genetics, learn what genes produce red hair, like the MC1R gene, learn what gene produced uh, blonde hair in black peoples, what gene produced uh, blonde hair in non-black peoples, what gene produces blue eyes, for example, the OCA2 gene, which is an acronym for oculocutaneous albinism type 2. There are multiple types of albinism, and it gives you different pigmentation of the skin. Um, the word albino uh, comes from the Latin word albus, and also uh, the Spanish word albo, and they both mean white, okay? But the majority of the people who call themselves white are typically pink and red skin. All right, guys, so with that being said, please learn some genetic science and don't come into my video talking nonsense. I don't mind your commentary, but if it's not scientific, then, you know, I have to respond, uh, you know, likewise. Anyway, so um, <clears throat> we're going to talk about the last black cultures of uh, Korea. We're just going to give a modern uh, history of Korea, okay? And this is from the Encyclopedia Britannica. Um, and if you want to see this page, you can look up here. It's right here, uh, realhistoryww.com forward slash world underscore history forward slash ancient 
uh, forward slash miscellaneous or MSC forward slash headlines forward slash Korea dot HTM. Okay. All right. The modern history of Korea. Um, in 1910, Japan annexed Korea. Okay, so let's get to this. <clears throat> and excuse me about that clicking, okay? <laughs> I still have to figure out how to get this thing off. This website is put together very beautifully, and I still can't figure out how to get this thing clicking, or uh, not to click. All right, here we go. A section of the Korean army led by deposed officials and Confu Confucian scholars took up arms against the Japanese in the southern provinces following the 1905 treaty. For five years, anti-Japanese guerrilla units called the Righteous Armies effectively harassed the Japanese occupation forces, especially in 1908 to 09. With the annexation, however, they were driven into Manchuria. Large numbers of Koreans emigrated to Manchuria, Siberia, and Hawaii before and after 1910, okay? And here we have a, a map of, uh, it says Kazakhstan to the upper left, India to the bottom uh, uh, left. Uh, you have Russia up to the center, Mongolia under that, China over here. Then you have North Korea in the red and Seoul, South Korea over here. And then we have Japan over here, okay? So that's just a map of what it looks like. We're talking about North Korea. <clears throat> All right, let's get down here. Okay, Korea under Japanese rule. Uh, Japan set up a government in Korea with the governor, a uh, generalship filled by generals or admirals appointed by the Japanese emperor. Uh, the Koreans were deprived of freedom of assembly, association, the press, and speech. Many private schools were closed because they did not meet certain arbitrary standards. Uh, the colonial authorities used their own school system as a tool for assimilating Korea to Japan, placing primary emphasis on teaching the Japanese language and excluding from the educational curriculum such subjects as Korean language and Korean history. <clears throat> the Japanese built nationwide transportation and communications networks and established a new monetary and financial system. They also promoted Japanese commerce in Korea while barring Koreans from similar activities. And here we have a picture of the Korea. Okay, that's why I labeled it the last blacks of Korea, because like I said, the world's first human beings and all these civilizations were diverse blacks. And so here you can see the picture for yourself. Uh, this is a picture taken. Let me go down to the bottom here. A wedding party in Seoul in 1900s. And we can see that Koreans are still... Uh, black peoples, okay? Typically, the recessive hair type, which is straight, uh, recessive phenotype, which is a very prominent nose or sharp nose, you know, similar to like Pinocchio and very thin lips, okay? That's one variation of black peoples, okay? All right, that's why I said diverse, meaning many variations. So go ahead and take a uh, look at this picture. Let me go back up. All right, look at it. See, this is what Korea looked like. Black man over there on the right. Uh, black man here. She's somewhat admixed. These children are basically mulattoes and mulattas, if they're female or male. Uh, he is pretty much uh, black still. Yep, black. Uh, black woman over here. She has her pa face painted. She's also a black woman, but she has her face painted because, you know, they, they adopted some system where, you know, white Skin was the ideal of beauty, which, you know, white skin is a recessive mutation for black skin peoples. And here to the far left, you have a black woman, but, you know, straight hair, recessive hair type. All right. So this is this. These are the last blacks of Korea. Uh, OK, so if you want to learn more about it, just go to www.realhistorywww.com. All right. Anyways, so let's move on. <clears throat> All right, so the colonial government uh, promulgated a land survey ordinance that forced uh, landowners to report the size and area of their land. <clears throat> By failing to do this, many farmers were deprived of their land. Farmland and forests owned jointly by a village or a clan were likewise expropriated by the Japanese since no single individual could claim... Oh, excuse me, sorry about that. Let's go back down. No single individual could claim them. Much of the land thus expropriated was then sold cheaply to Japanese. 
Many of the dispossessed took to the woods and subsisted by slash and burn tillage, okay? While others immigrated to Manchuria and Japan in search of jobs. The majority of Korean residents now in those areas are their descendants. Let's move up. The March First Movement. <clears throat> The turning point in Korea's resistant movement came on March 1st, 1919, when nationwide anti-Japanese rallies were staged. The former emperor, Ko Jung, the supreme symbol of independence, had died a few weeks earlier, bringing mourners from all parts of the country to the capital for his funeral. A Korean declaration of independence was read at a rally in Seoul on March 1st. Okay. So that was March 1st, 1919. Waves of students and citizens took to the streets demanding independence. <clears throat> An estimated 2 million people took part. The March 1st movement, as it came to be known, excuse me, uh, took the form of peaceful demonstrations appealing to the conscience of the Japanese. The Japanese, however, responded with brutal repression unleashing their gender, Mary, and army and navy units to suppress the demonstrations. They arrested some 47,000 Koreans, of whom about 10,500 were indicted, while some 7,500 were killed and 16,000 wounded. Oh, those Japanese, boy, I tell you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Anyways, moving on. I keep, I keep my personal feelings to myself. Now... Let's go to the other parts. We're still the last blacks of Koreas. Notice these are totems, right? And we find them all across the world. Okay, so let's look at and read what this is. These are uh, totems anyways. All right, there you go. Even as late as 1900, Koreans still pray to their African totems. Okay, so let's move up. Take a look at that. This is Korea. This is not Africa. And you can see... In, in the 1900, Koreans are still black peoples, okay? Recessive hair type, that's straight hair. Recessive phenotype, that's a sharp or prominent nose and thin lips, okay? Look all the way to the right, the, the guy with the backpack, he's a black man. All in front of him, to his right, black man. And she right here, uh, she's black, she's black. See, so Korea... Korea right now, if you go there, you won't find these peoples um, because just like in China, um, they had a lot of uh, like, for example, the Boxer Rebellion in China was to suppress those black peoples here in the early 1900s. OK, and a lot of genocides took place over there. Anyways, moving on. So when they when the Koreans and uh, Chinese and all these people try to be racist, just remind them uh, the original cultures of every part of Earth were diverse black skin peoples, including your land. And you can come here to uh, www.realhistoryworldwide and you can check it out and you can show them this stuff. All right. <clears throat> All right. Here we go. In September, in September, independence, in September, independence leaders, including Yi Tong Young and Ah Chang Oh, who in April had formed a Korean provisional government in Shanghai, elected Sing Man Ri as president. I hope I said that right. Sig Sing Man Ra. Ri. Okay, hopefully that's right. As president. It brought together all Koreans and all Korean exiles and established an efficient liaison with leaders inside Korea. Japan realized that its iron rule required more sophisticated methods. The gendarmerie gave way to an ordinary constabulary force and partial freedom of the press was granted. But the oppressive and exploitative, exploitative Japanese colonial policy remained ruthless, though using less conspicuous methods. Taking advan advantage of wartime business boom, Japan took leaps forward as a capitalist country. Korea became not only a market for Japanese goods, but also a fertile region for capital investment. Meanwhile, industrial development in Japan was achieved at the sacrifice of agricultural production. Okay, let me read that again. That sounded good. Meanwhile, industrial development in Japan was achieved at the sacrifice of agricultural production, creating a chronic shortage of rice. Okay, so basically, they wanted to be super developed, so uh, 
but agriculture was not. Okay. Uh, the colonial government undertook projects for increase in rice production throughout Korea. Many peasants were ordered to turn their dry fields into paddies. The program was temporarily suspended during the worldwide economic depression in the early 1930s. It soon resumed, however, in order to meet the increased need of the Japanese military in its war against China, which began in 1931. Most Koreans were forced to subsist on low-quality cereals imported from Manchuria instead of their own rice. The End of Japanese Rule Of the several, de de uh, I believe that's dailies, or dailies, and magazines found, founded shortly after the March 1st movement, the newspaper Dong A Ibo, East, de East Asia Daily, and Shosan Ibo, Korea Daily, spoke the loudest for the Korean people and inspired them with the ideals of patriotism, patriotism and democracy. In the ac academic community, scholars conducted studies on Korean culture and tradition. Novels and poems in colloqu colloquial Korean enjoyed new popularity. Hopefully you know what the word colloquial means. <laughs> All right. A major anti-Japanese mass rally was held in Seoul in 1926 on the occasion of the funeral of Emperor Song Jean. Okay, a nationwide student uprising uprising originated in Gwangju in November 1929, demanding an end to Japanese discrimination. These and other resistance movements were led by a wide spectrum of Korean intellectuals. In 1931. The Japanese imposed military rule once again. Okay. After the outbreak of the Second Sino Japanese War, 1937, and of World War II in the Pacific, uh, 1941, Japan attempted to obliterate Korea as a nation. Wow. Koreans were forced to worship at Japanese Shinto shrines and even to adopt Japanese style names, and academic societies devoted. Uh, to Korean studies as well as newspapers and magazines published in Korean were banned. The Japanese desperately needed additional manpower to replenish the dwindling ranks of their military and labor forces. As a consequence, hundreds of thousands of able-bodied Koreans, uh, both men and women, were drafted to fight for Japan and to work in mines, uh, factories, and military bases. In addition, after the start of the Pacific War, the Japanese forces forced thousands of Koreans, uh, Korean uh, women to provide sexual services. Wow. As comfort women for the military. That's a sick thing. <laughs> wow. When Shanghai fell to the Japanese, uh, the Korean provisional government moved to Chongqing, I think Shaanxing in southwestern China. It declared war against Japan in December 1941 and organized the Korean Restoration Army, composed of independence fighters in China. This army fought with the Allied forces in China until the Japanese surrender in August 1945, which ended 35 years of Japanese rule. Okay, sorry about that. That little air booger. <laughs> All right. So, division of Korea. Okay. Let's get to that. Uh, the Cairo Declaration, uh, issued on December 1st, 1943, by the United States, Great Britain, and China, pledged independence for Korea in due course. This vague phrase aroused the leaders of the Korean provisional government in Shangxing request interpretation from the United States. The, re the request, however, received no answer. At the Yalta conference held in February 1945, U.S. Press President Franklin D. Roosevelt proposed to Soviet Premier Joseph Stalin a four-powered tru uh, trusteeship for Korea consisting of the United States, Great Britain, uh, the USS USSR, and the Republic of China. Stalin agreed to Roosevelt's suggestion in principle, but they did not reach any formal agreement 
on the future stat status of Korea. And after the Yalta meeting, there was a growing uneasiness between the Anglo-American allies and the USSR. Throughout the post the Potsdam Conference in July 1945, U.S. military leaders insisted on encouraging Soviet entry into the war against Japan. The Soviet uh, military leaders asked their U.S. counterparts about invading Korea. And the Americans replied that such an expedition would not be practic practicable until after successful landing had had taken place on the Japanese. Sorry about that. Let me put this off. Let me turn off this. Okay. The Soviet uh, taking place on the Japanese mainland. Okay. Let me reread that again because I was disturbed. Okay. Throughout the post dam conference in July 1945. U.S. military leaders insisted on encouraging Soviet entry into the war against Japan. The Soviet military leaders asked their U.S. counterparts about invading Korea, and the Americans replied that, that such an expedition would not be practicable until after a successful landing had taken place on the Japanese mainland. Uh, the ensuing post dam declaration included the statement that the terms of the Cairo Declaration which promised Korea its independence shall be carried out. In the terms of its entry into the war against Japan on August 8, the USSR pledged to support the independence of Korea. And that was in August 8. Okay. Uh, on the following day, Soviet troops went into action in Manchuria and Northern Korea. Wow, man, this is interesting stuff. All right, let's move on down. The general uh, order number one, drafted on August 11 by the United States for Japanese surrender terms in Korea, provided for Japanese forces north of latitude 38 degrees north, the 38th parallel, to surrender to the Soviets and those south of that line to the Americans. Stalin did not object to the, the contents of the order. And on September 8th, American troops landed in Southern Korea, almost a month after the first Soviet entry. On the following day, the United States received the Japanese surrender in Seoul. There were now two zones, Northern and Southern, for the Soviets had already begun to seal off the 38th parallel. That's how you got North Korea and South Korea. Wow. So basically, the Soviets took one side, in the north, uh, and then uh, uh, America took one side in the south, and you know one is so uh, uh, you know uh, what is it? What do you call these American peoples? <laughs> I mean, I've been here for a while. Uh, democracy I and mean, communism. Yeah, right. Yeah, I've been in the U.S. for a while, but I was born in Jamaica, so <laughs> uh, there's no such thing as democracy if you think about it. You know. Uh, Democracy means everybody gets their, their way. Just because you get to vote doesn't mean that you win. But that's another story. Okay. Uh, so the, the, the historic decision to divide the peninsula has aroused speculation on several, several counts. Some historians attribute the division of Korea to military expediency in receiving the Japanese surrender, while others believe that the, the, the decision was a measure to prevent the Soviet forces from occupying the whole of Korea. Since U.S. policy toward Korea during World War II had aimed to prevent any single power's domination of Korea, it may be reasonable, reasonably concluded that the principal reason for the division was to stop the Soviet advance south of the 38th peril. Okay, now let's go down here to the read a little bit more. Remember guys, this is called Daily Read. So if you don't like to read, it's the wrong place for you. <laughs> All right. The Southern Zone. All right. The end of Japanese rule caused political confusion among Korean Koreans in both zones. In the South, various political parties sprang up. Although they were roughly uh, divided into uh, divided into rightists, leftists, and middle of the, ro the roaders, they had a common goal, the immediate attainment of self-government. As early as August 16, 1945, 
Uh, some Koreans organized a committee for the preparation of Korean independence headed by Wu Hong Leung, Yo, Yo, Yo Hong Hong, who was closely associated with the leftists. On September 6, the delegates attended a national assembly that was called uh, by the committee proclaimed by the committee proclaimed the People's Republic of Korea. But the U.S. military government under Lieutenant General Jean R. Hodge, the commanding general of the U.S. armed forces in Korea, refused to recognize the republic, asserting that uh, the military government was the only government in Korea, as stipulated in General Order Number 1. The exiled Korean provisional government on returning also was compelled to declare itself a political party, not a government. U.S. policy in Korea was to establish a trusteeship that would supersede both the American and the Soviet occupation forces in Korea. Okay, So because of uh, Russia and America, Korea was divided, basically. Right, let's pull this up. In late December, the Council of Foreign Ministers representing the United States, the Soviet Union, and Great Britain met in Moscow and decided to create a four uh, power trustee ship of, of up to five years. Upon receiving the news, Koreans reacted violently. In February 1946, to soothe the discontent, the military uh, government created the Representative uh, Democratic Council as an advisory body to the military government. This body was composed of Koreans and had its chairman Singman Ri, uh, former president of the Korean government in exile. In October, the military government created an interim legislative assembly, half of whose members were elected by the people and half appointed by the military government. Uh, <clears throat> the assembly was empowered to enact ordinances on domestic affairs, but was subject to the veto of the military government. The feeling against trusteeship came to a climax several months later when the assembly condemned trusteeship in Korea, the northern zone. Okay, That's North Korea now. Let's get to that. Unlike the U.S. forces in the south, the Soviet army marched into the north in 1945 accompanied by a band of expatriate Korean communists. By placing the latter in key positions of power, the Soviet Union easily set up a communist-controlled government in the North. On August 25th, the People, People's Executive Committee of South uh, Hamgyong Province was created by the South Hamgyong Province Communist Council and other nationalists. The Soviet authorities recognized the committee's administrative power in the province, thus setting a precedent for the committee's role throughout the provinces of the nor northern zone. In this way, the Soviet Union placed the North under its control without actually establishing a military government. In October, in October, Korean leaders in the North organized the Bureau of, the Bu the Bureau, Bureau of Five Provinces Administration, a central governing body, and this was replaced in February 1946 by the Provisional People's Committee for North Korea. This new agency, a de facto central government, adopted the political structure of the Soviet Union. So now, so Soviet Union and America is the reason why North Korea and South uh, Korea are divided. And by the way, guys, the word Korea means chosen. That's what the original black cultures of China, uh, Korea called it. Right? But that's a story for another day. All right. Communist leader King Kim Il-sung, who had fought in the resistance movement against the Japanese occupation, arrived in Pyongyang in the uniform of a major of the Red Army and was introduced to the people as a national hero on October 14, 1945. Shortly after his public appearance, Kim was elected first secretary of the North Korean Central Bureau of the Communist Party. After the Provisional People's Committee was organized with Kim as its chairman, it assumed the helm of existing uh, central administrative bureaus. 
A year later, in February 1947, a legislative body was established under the name of the Supreme People's Assembly, and with the strong support of the Soviet occupation authorities, Kim commenced consolidating his political power. Okay. Establishing of the two republics, the Moscow Conference of December 1945, which called for a four-power four trusteeship, created a joint U.S.-USSR commission of the rival U.S. and Soviet military commands in Korea to settle the question of establishing a unified Korea. When the commission convened in Seoul from March to May 1946, the Soviet delegates demanded that those Korean political groups that had opposed trusteeship be excluded from consultation. The Un United States refused, and on this rock foundered, uh, foundered all attempts by the commission to prepare for the unification of Korea. The commission met again from May to August 1947, but it achieved nothing toward the creation of a unified Korea. Here we go. The United States presented the question of Korean unification to the United Nations in September 1947. In November, uh, the United General Assembly in New York City in New York City adopted a resolution proposed by the United States that called for general elections in Korea under the observation of a United Uni uh, UN Temporary Commission on Korea. Those elected were to make up a national assembly, establish a government, and arrange with the occupying powers for the withdrawal of their troops from Korea. The USSR, however, barred the temporary commission from entering the northern zone. The South, however, held elections under the supervision of the Temporary Commission on May 10, 1948. The National Assembly conven uh, convened on May 31st and elected Singmen Ri Ra as its speaker. Shortly afterward, the Constitution was adopted and Ri was elected president on July 20th. Finally, on August 15th, the Republic of Korea was inaugurated okay, with Seoul as the capital, and the military government came to an end. In December, the United General uh, Assembly declared that, that the Republic was the only lawful government in Korea. Okay, okay so that was in uh, uh, May uh, Wait, that was in August 15, uh, 1948. Okay, perfect. So Korea was officially uh, became a republic on August 15, 1948. Okay. Meanwhile, on November 18, uh, 1947, the Supreme People's... Uh, wait, hold on. Make sure I was correct on that. Finally, on August 15, the Republic of Korea was inaugurated. Okay, where, where, what year was it? Was it 1948? Okay, wait, wait, September 1947. Could be 1947. Okay, I have to check on that. <laughs> All right, let's move on. So meanwhile, on November 18, 1947, the Supreme People's Assembly of North Korea set up a committee to draft a constitution. The committee adopted the new constitution in April 1948, and on August 25th, elections for members of the Supreme People's Assembly were held with a single list of candidates. On September 3rd, the Constitution was ratified by the Supreme People's Assembly, which was holding its first meeting in Pyongyang. Kim Il-sung was appointed premier, and on September 9th, uh, the Democratic People's Republic of Korea was proclaimed with the capital at Pyongyang. On October 12th, the USSR recognize the state as the only lawful government in Korea. So America got what they wanted and Russia got what they wanted. And Korea uh, got screwed over it. You know, they were split apart. All right, guys. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop at the Korean War and I'm going to finish. I'm going to pick up part two. Um, I, I, I named this the last blacks of Korea because um, I'm trying to showcase that uh, everywhere you go on planet Earth, there are some variations of black peoples. 
And uh, obviously, this is, the career is no different. Um, so thank you guys for checking out uh, www.realhistoryworldwide.com. Um, if you like the information that I give, please subscribe to the channel. Um, and, uh, you know, make sure you ring the bell, you know, because YouTube, for some reason, they're already giving me a fight. I've been on YouTube since 2008. I just started putting up these videos, uh, you know, maybe three months ago. I've had this website forever. Um, but go ahead and just check out the website. Read up. You know, you want to read about the original black Greeks. We have it here. Um, the original black peoples of the Americas. Uh, the original black uh, kings, like King George III. Uh, you know, King James, we have pictures of him. He was a black man, you know, the King James of the Bible. Okay, guys, so go ahead and check it out. Uh, thank you for checking me out on uh, Real History Worldwide. Until next time, I say peace.